My name is Bill Dima, and I'm the mayor of Spangler Borough. I've been in this borough now for 30 years, and there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of heritage in this borough. And on behalf of the borough, I would like to welcome all of you to the longest little town in the world. Some of the heritage we have here are our churches, our veterans, our fire companies. Most of the industry that was here, the logging industry, the coal mines, they're sort of disappearing now, but the heritage is still here. And also, I would like to invite you this year to celebrate with us the 100-year anniversary of Spangler Borough. This will be the social event of the year, and it will be held August the 14th through the 21st. And I would like to welcome all of you to the borough. which is now Spangler, was a great forest. Delaware and Shawnee Indians hunted in this area. Pioneer trader, John Hart, and missionary, Demetrius Galitzin, traveled this way too. Lumbermen cleared several hundred acres of land, cut and floated their timber down the Susquehanna River to market. Farmers moved into these cleared areas. Before the Civil War, Spangler was known as the Hidden Valley. Slaves were passed through on their way to Canada and freedom. Colonel Spangler, the town stake, bought a sticker on a bowl for $250. The Pantry of Spangler, the first coach team in any place yet, not from a borough, thus, form. In all proceedings. We are the king of
afternoon or day to for question and answer series. They wanted me to go down there, so I told them why didn't they load them all up in the bus and up and show them in a job. And they did, and that was the biggest thing that ever went over, they said. But the first thing they came to the, the paper mill in Tyrone, then they come up where we were cutting timber in Altona, showed me how to thin it out and increase the water flow. We had an Altona where there wasn't a, a stream dried up in the summer, we cut the timber out of it. In the following year, the six-inch stream of water run down through it dry as time of the summer. The trees, they uh, used all the water, and that's in the water conservation. Mm -hmm. But then we get back to where on that tour, then we bring them up and showed them our tree farms. We've been tree farming for about 20 years. And showed them the tree farms, how but thin it out, how much faster the timber grows. And after the tour was over, when I gave them the final talk, that the two bus loads was out of the farm, and I says to them, I understand you teachers here, you get credit for what you're doing today, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. I says, that's pretty good. I never passed the eighth grade, and I'm your teacher. <laughs> that was like a kick out of them. Grocery store as yes. well. Yes. Pictures in here. Yes. We had at the corner across from the uh, fire. How do you say it? The fire hall. Yeah. Right on the corner. A corner. He had a grocery store on, in the corner of the building. You know. Mm -hmm. And then next door he had a studio uh, where he would take pictures and uh, de de develop films for other people. He finished uh, pictures for the public, but he also took uh, pictures in his own studio there. Mm -hmm. And he was there until we moved down here. Did he bring his business with him to oh, this yes. building? And he also did uh, job printing, envelopes, billheads, letterheads, Anything that he could put on a 10 by 15 press. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, we still have the press. Oh, that's interesting. He would open the shutter and start, when he'd open the shutter, the camera would start to move. Mm -hmm. And the camera would just go like this around until he would stop it. He could see in the you know, or he could tell finder. where to stop it. Uh, he took a picture someplace, I don't remember where it was, and we don't have the picture. But there was a fella that got, he was on the end over here. And when the picture was finished, he was also over there. Mm -hmm. He ducked out as soon as the camera got out of uh, away from him. He ran around back to the people and stood over there. So he was on that picture twice.
thought he was electric. What would you call it? He, was he said the day was coming when that was the kind of light you'd have. Mm -hmm. He had that house of Jack Farrell's all wired, mm -hmm. but there was no electricity, you know. He connected it up to batteries, mm -hmm. and we had electric light. Rather dim, mm -hmm. but nevertheless. My dad? <laughs> a patent? What do you do a patent for? That's what he'd say. <laughs> he actually did. He used one thing in his shop down here, in the garage shop. Mm -hmm. He had a hernia. And I came to this law that came in, you had to inspect cars. Mm -hmm. Well, he couldn't stoop over because of that. He made himself a contraption. He called it a contraption. Mm -hmm. That he could gauge some way. I don't know exactly what is involved in all these inspections. Nevertheless, he built this thing. A salesman came in and said, Mr. Dunn, where did you get that? Dad said, I made it. He said, do you care if I copy it, if I draw? He said, I'd like to show my boss what you do. And he said, okay. So he drew it. It came out on the market. And those people yeah. had the patent. My dad needed a tool. He made it. Mm -hmm. His father did the same thing before him. Yeah. Yeah. But my dad had those big windows. I don't know if you remember or not. When Shaner's, before that uh, first building is torn down, he had great big plate, plate glass windows. And they used to give him stickers that hang in the window so everybody would know the show. And he would give Dad so many tickets. We were rich. Uh -huh. We took those tickets and went to the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dad did, too. Yeah. Tuesday night, my father went to the movie, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. He went to the movie on Tuesday night. And there was a different movie every week? Every, almost every day. Oh, really? That meant? It's several times a week. I shouldn't be quoted there because I don't remember how many different shows, mm -hmm. but I know that... They changed quite often. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was, they were very good. Uh -huh. You mentioned the brewery. Do you, do you remember that much of the brewery? Oh, I remember a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, they made it, they made their own ice. Mm hmm And, uh, on this end of the brewery, there was a cement wall built out like a bin. And after they, when they were brewing the beer, or at the end of the brewing period, they would take the mash out there and dump it. And some of the farmers would come in and haul it home for their cattle uh -huh. and their uh, pigs, hogs. And uh, the story goes that uh, one fellow, when he would be going home, or he, he would be loaded and the team would take him home <laughs> with a load of this cash. The team knew the way home. Uh -huh. and then there was another story about uh, a fellow that had taken some home and he, I don't know whether he kept it too long or if he gave the hog gave it to his hogs too quickly. Anyway, they all got drunk and broke down his fence. <laughs> <laughs> Building the outside made up, was it brick or wood or? Brick. It was brick? And then they had a, they had a warehouse across the tracks. Mm -hmm. And there was a railroad spur, you know, came in there, or a siding, they called it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the building that was sitting there right at the crossing was both their office, or it was, they had an office in there, and it was also a warehouse. You know, they could store their stuff in. Mm -hmm. And then to, on down to where, where uh, your shop is, there was a addition to the building where they kept their horses. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I worked down there, it was a wholesale. So after they put you in the brewery, there was a wholesaler, a wholesaler took it over mm -hmm. from uh, Phillipsburg, a lot of barbed rice. 
different than it is now. You know, it's more modern now. Back when I joined, I joined when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, What kind of trucks did you have then? Well, I don't know whether Larry can remember the old ladder truck or not. Uh, and then we had a... I saw a picture of it recently. We had an old real pumper mm -hmm. with a what they called a rotary pump on it. And it was so old that when we quit using it, we had put uh, uh, heavy grease in the pump. Mm -hmm. So that when we went out and had to use the pump, that they would lift the water. Cause, yeah. Because if we didn't have that grease in there, it, it wouldn't uh, create a vacuum enough to draw the water up through the suction hole. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, where was the whistle? Where did it blow from? Right up the street or a, a block. Mm -hmm. uh, we kept the, this old pumper in uh, Bill Dun William Dunn's garage. Mm -hmm. There was a, an addition on the side of the building. We kept the uh, truck there, and the whistle was mounted on two poles beside the building. Mm -hmm. And they took the fire calls. Was it an electric whistle, or was it? Oh, yeah, it was a siren. Electric siren, it wasn't a whistle. Didn't we have steam one time years ago? Uh, at one time, the brewery, they used a brewery whistle for a fire alarm. Okay. It was a steam operated one. Mm -hmm. But uh, that that was back to the under a few years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was when they still had a hose cart. So from the time you were 16 till after you were fire chief. You always belong to the fire company? I still do.
for a loaf of bread. Dollar five for a gallon of gas. A dozen roses, 1993 in a vase, arranged as they are, it's $35. In a box, it's $30. Right here in Spangler, the longest little town in the world.